Okay, right off the bat, this video is an extension of my previous video explaining the Minecraft iceberg. If you haven't seen that, the following won't make as much sense, so check it out using the link below. First of all, I want to thank everybody for the responses to the first iceberg video. It's a drastic change from the content my channel has produced in the past, and it really makes me happy to see that others are enjoying it. This is the first video I've released that has been so popular that I can't read every comment. You guys left me a lot of positive feedback. Well, mostly positive feedback. In this video, I'm going to address a few things that were incorrect from the last video. Then, I'm going to dive into a list of entries that I think should have been on the iceberg. Skip to the timestamp below if you want to watch that part right now. Let's get started. Oh yeah, by the way, there are no sudden appearances of Herobrine in this video, sorry about that. However, the 1.16 changelog doesn't say removed Herobrine, so I'd keep my eyes open if I were you. By far the biggest fact that I missed had to do with the evokers. The theory stated that their sound effects were from cult recordings. I made the argument that each of their noises was clearly inspired by villagers except for one. The origins of this sound effect are from well before Minecraft existed. It's from the game Age of Empires released back in 1997. The priest unit is able to convert enemy units and in doing so makes the famous sound effect. So this actually has been a meme for quite some time and I just wasn't OG enough to recognize it. If the connection to Age of Empires wasn't already obvious, evokers in Minecraft include an easter egg where they can turn red sheep into blue sheep, a clear nod to the priest's ability. So back to the iceberg entry. Are evoker chants actual cult recordings? We can confidently say no, they are not. As I was editing this video, it was announced that Steve was going to be added to Super Smash Bros Ultimate. I honestly couldn't believe it, but it looks like Steve posting actually worked. Maybe it was Mojang all along. Some people pointed out that fake multiplayer might be referring to the fact that single player Minecraft runs a local server and then connects to it. That does make sense, and probably what the iceberg was talking about. It's the main reason things can lag even when you're offline. Your computer is running an isolated server, and it's still vulnerable to the same types of slowdowns. Something else. I've seen various sources referring to Pop Bob as a she, but also some as a he. I'm not completely sure which it is, so if I got that wrong, I apologize. Also, apparently Alex is not necessarily supposed to be female. The character was based on Jeb, whose long ponytail we've mentioned before. It makes sense that people thought that Alex was a girl, and there are countless news articles saying that, so I think the misconception is pretty common. This makes it a little bit less likely that Rana was the inspiration for Alex. Some Bedrock Corrections You can make skins in-game in Bedrock Edition, although some require payment. I played Java, so I was unaware of that, but it is in the base game. Another Bedrock feature that a few people have mentioned was a player spawn egg. This is only possible if you use an NBT editor to change the inventory. I sort of want to put this in the category of a mod, since you can't do this without tweaking the game files, but it's technically possible in the game. There are a few more details. The end was at one point referred to by the biome identifier Sky. That's pretty good evidence for the theory that the Sky Dimension eventually became the end. In terms of the Captain Sparkles blackmail, I think this video might be what it's referring to. Also, here's my car. I was told I had to record it here, otherwise I wouldn't get my channel back. Um, back to you. This seems like a joke to me, but who knows. In fact, that's the main problem with this iceberg. Too many of the deeper entries are obvious jokes. Many of the comments agree with me, although some of them are more eloquent than others. Thanks for the kind words. That's why I want to look at some things that I wish were on the iceberg. Many of these come from an improved iceberg someone sent me, which actually had a lot of stuff I was going to talk about anyways. Unlike the previous video, all of these are real. Let's dive right in and see what should have been on the other iceberg. PC Gamer Demo In June 2011, the magazine PC Gamer came with a CD containing a demo version of Minecraft. It allowed players to play the full game for 100 minutes before it would lock, and blocks could no longer be placed or destroyed. The game contained a starter chest and helpful hints to get the player going. Being a demo, the world has a few strange features. First of all, every cow has a PC Gamer logo tattooed to its side. There's also a giant logo out in the distance. It's made of wool and snow, so it can be broken or lit on fire. Furthermore, a hidden chest can be found at spawn if you dig down a little bit. The demo is actually a really good introduction to what Minecraft was like back in 2011. 
If you want, you can download the demo right now, I'll put a link in the description. It's a nice little 4 megabyte look into the past. Roses While we're on the topic of old Minecraft, the poppy used to be called the rose. When you look at how roses grow in real life, it's pretty obvious why they made the change. I personally like the old texture better, but hey, what can you do? Giants Minecraft includes several mobs that don't spawn naturally in the game, but can be accessed through console commands. The oldest of these is the Giant, which was added to the game back on February 5th, 2010. It's a zombie that's six times larger than the normal version. As scary as it looks, it's an unsupported mob, so it can't actually hurt the player. It's one of the last remaining relics of quote-unquote old Minecraft, and it can still be spawned as of 1.16 using the summon command. As an aside, there's a theory that the extremely rare fossils that can generate in the overworld are fossils from giant zombies. Nothing else in Minecraft quite matches them, except for possibly the Ender Dragon. Zombie Horse Next up is the Zombie Horse. These were released with the Horse Update in 2013. They're very similar to normal horses, although they can't be tamed once spawned. Also, due to a bug, they cannot be ridden in water. Zombie horses aren't that useful, but they're still pretty cool. Toast There's another naming easter egg that I didn't mention in the last video. Naming a rabbit to Toast changes the texture to a black and white rabbit. This was added to the game as a memorial for a reddit user whose girlfriend lost her rabbit. It's a really cool gesture by Mojang for some random person on the internet. Minecraft Mob Gender If you really start to think about the mobs in Minecraft, it's hard to figure out what gender they're supposed to be. Some mobs are easy. The Ender Dragon is probably a female because it lays an egg. Others are more complex. Cows have both udders and horns, and chickens look like roosters but lay eggs. However, not just stated that those mobs were intended to be genderless, which is sort of how I interpreted it before I really thought about it. Rare Biomes Minecraft includes many different biomes, 67 in the overworld to be exact. A unique quirk to the modern terrain generation system is that different biomes have different rarities. Some rare varieties include jungle, mushroom fields, badlands, and giant tree taigas. The rarest of them all is Modified Jungle Edge, which is a hilly transition biome that isn't all that interesting, although it's so rare that even the Locate Biome command will often fail to find it. Shattered Savannah, on the other hand, is fascinating. Instead of the flat, grassy terrain of the standard savanna, the shattered variant is incredibly chaotic, with huge peaks that can reach as high as the build limit. It's crazy compared to most of the biomes, which are relatively tame. It reminds me a lot of the extreme hill generation back in beta, and it's a cool place to live if you're able to find one. Shearing Mushrooms This one is pretty simple, but still interesting. Using shears on a mushroom removes the mushrooms and turns it back into a normal cow. This seems to imply that the mushrooms are normal cows that have been corrupted by the fungus. This occurs in real life with the cordyceps fungus that takes over ants and causes them to become kind of like zombies. Several other video games have used this idea, including Pokemon with Parasect, and The Last of Us where the infected are controlled by the cordyceps fungus. Is this happening with the mushrooms? It's certainly food for thought. Chainmail crafted from fire. Chainmail armor has been in the game for a very long time. It was first added way back in 2009. However, it had a very strange crafting recipe. Instead of using materials like iron, chainmail armor was crafted using fire blocks. The recipe was definitely weird for myself and many others who I talked to. It seems as though the use of fire was a somewhat arbitrary decision whose main purpose was to be a placeholder recipe. Since fire blocks were unobtainable, players couldn't accidentally craft the chainmail before it was fully tested. A legitimate way to get chainmail armor wasn't added until 2012 with the blacksmith villagers. The crafting recipe was removed in 2014, and Mojang is yet to add a replacement. Studded Armor Related to chainmail is studded armor. This existed in very early versions of Minecraft, and the textures came from another game by Notch called Legend of the Chambered. However, the armor offered no protection and was used only for debugging purposes. Interestingly, a few other Minecraft textures also came from this game, including leather armor, swords, and apples. A texture for quivers also existed for a while, but it never did anything. Title Screen World The title screen in modern Minecraft contains a blurry background of a Minecraft world. Similar to pack.png, the Minecraft community was able to figure out what seed was used to take this screenshot. Once again, I'll refer you to the Salsi 1 video, which does a good job of explaining how this happened. 
giant slimes. Slimes in magma cubes are mobs that are well known for having different sizes. Killing a larger slime causes it to split into two to four smaller slimes depending on its size. Sizes of one, two, and four spawn naturally. This right here is a size 256 slime. It's a whopping 130 blocks high. The best, or worst part, is that it still splits when killed. After a few splits, it brings my computer to its knees. It's such a fun and relatively unknown feature, and I highly encourage you all to try this for yourself. Of course, the same works for magma cubes. Giant Phantoms Phantoms can also be spawned as giants in much the same way. They have the same HP but deal more damage as the size increases. Phantoms are scary enough as they are. A giant phantom is straight up terrifying. Void Fog Older versions of Minecraft had a fog particle effect as the player got near bedrock. Visibility was also reduced the further down the player went. It was pretty cool for the ambiance it added, but it could also get annoying. It was apparently removed due to performance issues. Minecraft Raspberry Pi Edition A Raspberry Pi is essentially a credit card sized computer and it can be used for a wide variety of engineering projects. There's a simplified version of Minecraft that can be installed. It's designed to help people learn to code in Python, which is a popular programming language. This version is less of a game and more of an educational tool. If you happen to have a Pi laying around, download it and see what you think. Minecraft Education Edition there's a version of Minecraft that is designed specifically to be used in schools. You can download it for free, although you'll need an email address from an educational institution to use it. This version contains a tutorial for Minecraft, as well as many features that could be used in the classroom. Some unique elements include the camera, NPCs, border blocks, and blackboards. There's a lot going on here, and the Education Edition probably deserves its own video. Debug World when creating a new world, holding shift while selecting the world type enables the debug mode world type. This world contains all blocks in all possible states arranged in a huge grid. It should be pretty obvious what this world is for, but it's still really cool to fly around and see just how many things are possible in Minecraft. Minecraft features inspired by mods. Modded Minecraft has been a pretty large subculture for a long time. I remember playing Tech It and then eventually Feed the Beast. The first thing that came to my mind with this entry was the Ender Chest from the Ender Storage mod. It's tough to find old versions of it, but Ender Storage predates vanilla chests by at least a couple of months, and I seem to remember it being longer than that, although I have no concrete evidence. The Ender Chest is such a unique idea that I have a hard time believing it wasn't inspired by Ender Storage. Another one is the Buildcraft Hopper, which worked in much the same way as the vanilla hopper. In fact, Buildcraft was forced to change the name of their item to Shoot because of the vanilla edition of a hopper. Horses used to be in the Mo Creatures mod. According to Jeb, the creator of Mo Creatures helped Mojang implement horses into vanilla Minecraft, which is why Minecraft horses are extremely similar to the modded version. The same goes for pistons. There was a piston mod whose code was added directly into Minecraft. The mod's creator, Hippoplatamus, is in the credits. A simpler example is single player commands. I remember needing to download a mod whenever I wanted to use commands back in beta, but eventually that was added to the base game. There are quite a few more features that showed up in mods first, such as jungles, but since these exist in real life, it's harder for me to buy that Mojang was inspired by the mods themselves. Still, there's a long list on the Feed the Beast subreddit which I'll link down below. Removed Structures Older versions of Minecraft had some interesting structures that have since been removed. InfDev in particular has a few examples dating from 2010. There used to be giant brick pyramids that could spawn naturally. They had no loot or anything inside. In fact, they were mostly used as a test to see how the world generation could handle such large structures. There was also an InDev house that would spawn with the player upon beginning a new world. They were made of moss stone and contained four chests with TNT, every type of block, every item, and every color of wool. The house underwent several changes with various versions before its eventual removal from the game in early 2010. Missing Versions Minecraft has several older versions that are known to have existed but are currently missing. Some of these only have a few screenshots to prove their existence, and a few only have change logs. It's unknown where many of these have gone, but there are probably people out there who unknowingly still have them on their computers. 
deepening the mystery, Notch has region blocked his old Minecraft videos around the world. Is he hiding something? Probably not, but Notch has spoken publicly about the depression that came with his Minecraft fame. My best guess is that this has something to do with him removing the videos. Notch, if you're watching this, I hope you're doing better now. Shadow Seeds Every Minecraft seed has a shadow, where the biome map is the same, but everything else is different. This has to do with the way seeds are used when the world is generated. It was discovered by a Reddit user, but if you want to see a good explanation as to how it works, check out this video by Ant Venom. It's actually pretty easy to calculate a shadow seed, just add this number to an existing seed. I like to think about how the Shadow Seed is an alternate universe where people settled in different places, creating a whole new timeline. Steve Villager Hybrid At one point, there existed an unused texture that, when modeled, produced a surreal Steve Villager Hybrid. It couldn't be spawned in the game, and the images we have are fan recreations using the textures. The purpose of this remains a mystery, although it was most likely a way to test what villagers could have looked like. MD3 Models I mentioned in the previous video how there were several models in the game that didn't match the Minecraft style, including Rana. Notch uploaded a video that shows several other MD3 models that weren't implemented in the game. They look so out of place, like they're from another universe. Mercifully, these were removed after a couple of days. An Uneasy Alliance Minecraft has several achievements that help the player as they progress through the game. One such achievement is an Uneasy Alliance, whose text reads, rescue a gas from the nether, bring it safely home to the overworld, and then kill it. Besides having a dark ending, the particular wording of this achievement leads to some unsettling implications. The word rescue is used specifically. According to Webster's Dictionary, to rescue means to free from confinement, danger, or evil. Additionally, the achievement explicitly uses the word home to refer to the overworld. We can draw a few conclusions from this. First, it seems as though ghasts are not native to the nether. In fact, the opposite appears to be true. They were somehow taken from their home in the overworld and trapped in another dimension. So how and why did this happen? There are no definitive answers here, but a few pieces of evidence can help us unpack this mystery. First, there's an unused gas sound effect called the affectionate scream, which would apparently happen when the player did something to make the gas affectionate towards them, such as, oh, I don't know, rescuing them from the nether. The other thing to consider is the name of the achievement, which is an uneasy alliance. Why would a human willingly ever ally with a ghast, considering how difficult it is to get one out of the nether? The ghast must give something in return in order to ensure that the alliance is fair for the human. Perhaps a freed ghast would choose to drop a ghast here, a critical item for making regeneration potions and end crystals. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of well-known theories about this. Some of you will have noticed that there's a very important piece of evidence that I have neglected to mention thus far. The Mob Bestiary book includes a cutaway drawing of a gas that lets us see what's inside, and what we find is chilling. We can see what looks to be a computer system where the brain should be, as well as a cannon that fires out projectiles. We can't tell for sure, but if that's the case, then it should completely change how we talk about the gas. Is it possible that they're not even alive, but instead some electromechanical contraption? Who made them? And how could a robot be banished? Are its tears nothing more than a sinister bait for the unwitting human? No one knows for sure. I'd be especially interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I think this is a really underrated mystery that deserves some more discussion. Thanks to everybody who made it to the end of the video. Minecraft is a pretty deep game, and I'm glad I got to talk about some of the things that were missing on the first iceberg video. Speaking of which, if you haven't seen it, I'll put a link on the end screen. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Also, what videos do you want to see me do next? Minecraft secrets? Other icebergs? I want to make the content that you all want to see, so tell me what sounds interesting. This has been Retro Gaming Now. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.